Today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to get some plants in this space. We are so excited that this is finally happening. Stay tuned. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. I am Jenny and yes, today is a very monumental day here in the life of the patio at our house. We are finally at the point where we can get some plants into the outer landscape surrounding this whole patio area. So you're just going to go spend the day with us. You know how it is a day in the life of never quite sure where it's going to go. We think we know where it's going, but Again, there could be detours along the way. The plan for today is to get what I call the bones of the landscape in. We know for certain, we talked about this in one of our last videos, so you can check it out above, is the overall plan for this space. Our goal for the day is to get the incredible hydrangeas planted, the nine bark gardenias, the tea olives, um, some other like the Gatsby gal hydrangea, get those in place because that we know that that's where they're definitely going to be going in here. Get the fountain placed. It's not going to be hooked up, but get it placed so we can figure out our spacing for this whole area irrigation installed and then finally mulch on top of that at that point everybody that's in the ground of course will be receiving water and protection from the hot sun that is upon us here in North Carolina and as I get plants and as I want to add to I can certainly do that so it's just going to be a really fun day we're excited about it <laughs> this has been a long time in the making and to finally see some plants in the outskirts of the patio is very exciting what we're first going to start doing show you is we got to do a little bit of work on the irrigation again I, we talked about this in that last video when we were back here um, so jerry has got the little mini bobcat ready to go he has the trencher on it so he has got to trench a line from if you can see where the shovel is sticking out of the ground that's kind of our conduit that we placed when we before we put the pathway in so that's going to bring water from the main control valve of the irrigation system across underneath the pathway to both the bed where the forest pansy is and then the boxes the raised planters that are immediately connected to the patio so that is what we've got to do is he's got to trench from where the shovel is over to where the big hole the big hole is where the valves are so we're going to get that going of course because we want to do any kind of trench work um, prior to planting because it just makes life so much easier to do it before plants are in so that's what we're going to do we're going to start on that and then we're going to go from there i think maybe we'll start placing some things i don't know we'll see but let's get to digging So explain to me, you've got the main water line coming in here and we're trying not to hit the main water line, correct? Yeah, the main water line coming from the front of the house where the other irrigation system is. It's in here somewhere. So it's in here somewhere. We're just trying not to hit it. Yeah. And then sweet Emily is going to go pick up some PVC pick up, parts. Pick up some PVC parts for us for that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's pretty close because Here's that box comes over this way, so it's, it's somewhere in here. 
was not up here. It's, it's, it's not more in there. this area. And I got towels and plastic bags for when you hit the line. I mean, not hit it, when you find the line, right? No, we're going to no. put these towels, plastic bags over those holes so I don't throw dirt up when those pipes is open. Oh, so we're going to plug the holes so that they stay clean. All right. And I'm getting ready to trench where that box is going to go. All uh, three lines coming out. Three lines coming out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you need to give Emily instruction on pickup? You got my email. In the email, it blows has a locker box. Nothing yet. <laughs> the day is young. Oh, was that something? Or is that just rock? No, oh, sorry. I saw white. It is white PVC, right? Yep. So now we just have a, a maze of tunnels. Yep, they gotta be cleared out. They gotta be cleared out. Do we know where another shovel is? Okay. Yep. Do you know where my trenching shovel is? It's pretty sweet. Oh, dear heavens, that smells good. Gotta love some lavender. Munstead. Alrighty, friends. So we've got some of the trenching done, a couple of the pipes laid, a little here. And I told you, you're gonna be everywhere today. A little here, a little there, back and forth, ping pongs all over the day. Um, 
But Jerry and I went over to the nursery. You can see it on the trailer behind us, and we got picked up the tea olives, um, two of the patchy rose grass, then lots of biotone, plant tone, rose tone. Because of course, as we're planting these plants, we're going to fertilize them well. We'll go through that whole process. Jerry is picking up the unique stone bowl because really that is the one thing that we need to start with that's going to be our focal point get it exactly where we want it and then we can lay everything else around that again we're not setting the fountain up today per se that it's working we're just putting it in its place so that we can build from there so that's a great tip when you are creating a new space no matter what it may be maybe it's a tree maybe it's a fountain maybe it's a bench whatever your main focal point is going to be start with that and then build from there so that's what we're going to do um, it's a beautiful beast so <laughs> this is going to be fun Because I imagine it's, I mean, I don't know how big the basin is going to be and all that other stuff. I imagine it coming just a little bit closer, but because of the pallet, you know. I don't mind it being out a little bit. It gives you plenty of room, have the rocks and something else. In front of it? Okay. And that way it's Yeah. There. Okay. All right. Set some tea olives out. Um, we could go look at the ones in the front. Right, I think we push them back. Other stuff up here. What are you going to put back here? Nothing. So how, that's what I want to know, it's kind of how, you know, how wide can they get if we let them? All right. When in doubt, ask Professor Google. Yeah, I just want as much planting bed in front of me as I can. Right, so we know that they're 15 to 30 tall. Um, but for us, they're going to be a little bit smaller. It said that width is similar to height. So, depends on the variety, of course. But I say, you know, it's like six feet wide. So, space them three feet apart. I like that. I 
then um, those two are definitely going to... See, this one can go back just a little bit for me. It's like, yeah. it's really in front of that one. Well, I know there's a mound of dirt right there, but... More like right in here. Line, and we can just yeah. Move that one back some. Yes. And then we'll be all the way back here, probably. Because right all we need is a walking path back there. We don't need to get any like machinery or anything, you know, behind there. Yeah, now that I like. Because see, that gives us plenty of room to put some azaleas in front of it, and then we still have plenty of room in front here to put the extra roses. <laughs> More David Austin roses for Jenny. Tea olives are set into place, and the idea is that Tea olives, depending on the variety, and of course we're on the border of tea olives being, um, it being too cool for tea olives, because we are in North Carolina Zone 7B, they really do thrive in those hot, warm climates. But we have had tea olives here at the house, and they have done great for several years. These are going to be obviously more exposed, so they're going to be a little bit more petite than say if you were in Georgia. Again though, they're going to get to be a nice mature size. We want these to grow nice and tall. These are a seven gallon container um, already in that four foot mark. What we've done is we've spaced them four feet apart from each other in kind of a little bit of an arch. Um, we'll have more plantings in front of it, so the tea olives will be those great evergreens that will get nice and tall. Then we'll have azaleas in front of those, then further in front of that, more perennials. I do want to um, add some more David Austin roses next spring, so they'll most likely go in this vicinity. Um, but as far as behind, what we will do is just have a walking path that is mulched between the back of the tea olives and the garden shed. We don't, maybe a wheelbarrow can go through there, but no machinery will need to go through there because we can always go around the back. So we'll just have a walking path that you can get from the shed um, around to the storage area. So no flowers back there. The tea olives truly will be that screen and then we'll just go from there. Right now, what we're gonna do is go ahead and finish up with the plumbing, get everybody glued together, get them all buried, and then we will go ahead and just kind of lightly mark for us right now where those lines are because when we're coming in here with the auger, we don't wanna hit what we've just worked on. So we'll have little markers to tell us where those pipes are and then we'll go from there. So let's get the pipes glued together, get them buried, and then we can get the tea olives planted and other plants placed.
we got the first tea olive hole dug. Um, Jerry knew that the main water line was going to be right in that area, so he started with the auger and then he finished finished digging it by hand and sure enough that PVC line is running right there where the tea olive is sitting on top of. Woo! Did you see that bird? I don't know, she about got dive bombed by a robin. Anyway, sorry about that. So the tea olive is sitting on top of that line. It's fine, it's a PVC, the, it's no big deal. No worries on that. Um, obviously we have very much red clay here. You will notice that the only thing that we did to that hole was put biotone starter fertilizer in the bottom of it. That is a great way to help ensure that your plants Trees, shrubs, perennials, you can use monoannuals. Um, it gets a really healthy root system going. Now, Jerry is putting the native soil straight back in that hole. We're not using potting mix. We're not using any other kind of amendment to the soil. This is a big, huge controversy. People think, you know, you're supposed to amend it with potting soil. You know, red clay is horrible. Don't do that. No, you're going to mess up your plants if you do this. Now, this first one, well, all of them kind of, um, we typically always plant our shrubs and trees high. Again, we have clay soil. A great thing about clay soil is it holds moisture really well. A bad thing about clay soil is that it holds moisture really well in our wet, wet winters. And if we plant these too deep, the plants naturally obviously are going to sink just a little bit. So if you plant it even or below, then you're creating this crater effect. Water will sit there in our wet winters and pool there. And that is the best way to kill your trees and shrubs is planting them too deep and they will actually, the roots will rot and they will die. You plant them high so that the water sheds away. Trust me, there are tons of roots down there below that line, even if you put your shrub an inch, two inches above the soil line, think of all the roots that are below it. They're soaking it up. I promise you, this is the best way to go when you have this red clay soil. Obviously, we're gonna come back and we're gonna mulch this. We'll bring the mulch up to the edge of those shrubs, to the roots, so they're not just gonna sit out there and hang out and dry out. Um, anything else you wanna add? We are going to do this on all of the plants everybody gets biotone and then everybody is going to get their specific fertilizer so tea olives are acid loving plants so they're going to receive hollytone once we get all the soil around and it's all smoothed out then i'll come and come back with the hollytone and go around what we call the drip line so that's where the edge of the plant it drips and we're going to sprinkle the fertilizer around that so P things that love hollytone are your tea olives, azaleas, camellias, gardenias, um, evergreens, hollies, obviously, those kinds of things. Our um, hydrangeas will get rose tone, interestingly enough. Hydrangeas have the same um, nutritional requirements as roses, those woody ornamentals, so they will receive rose tone. Everything else will receive plant tone. If you only have one fertilizer, plant tone definitely would be the way to go because I call it the Swiss Army knife of fertilizers. It'll take care of everything, annuals, perennials, trees, shrubs, vegetables, you name it. Um, and then of course, once we fertilize, then we'll come back with mulch and, and tidy everybody up. Did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. Got it all? Sounds good. We're Sounds going to roll and plant and everything that we do in the next speedy moment is going to be what she just said. Yeah. So we're going to take everything that I said and we're going to go and we're going to speed it up and get it done. It's the magic of television, folks.
snafu when we uh, were trenching, not trenching, what do you call that thing? Digging a hole for the one of the gardenias. We hit a line that's a French drain line from somewhere up there, hit it, and anyway, so this is where it dumps out. Complete total hot mess. It's all right. We'll get it fixed. So water's flowing out. So this is where it dumps out. So we'll fix this so that it drains all the way out. And then over here was the hole. Um, I joked and I told Jerry, I was like, it's a shame it wasn't where a hydrangea was going. We could just, <laughs> we could just leave it wet. But um, the last thing you want is a gardenia sitting in that kind of water because it would kill it quicker than anything. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take the these, these pieces, these extra pieces, and Jerry will just splice it. This is not our first rodeo. Unfortunately, we've done this before. So he'll just splice it, fix it together, and then that'll take care of this issue right here. And then we'll deal with this part at some point. So we'll get this attached to that. And of course the sun came out. Sweet friends, it is like 
I think it's like 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It is getting quite toasty. Our uh, <laughs> cloud cover went away, but we've made some really good progress. I don't think we're gonna get all that we had a thought we were gonna do. We're not gonna get that done. Uh, we ran into a couple of problems. One, majorly with the, when we tapped into the French drain pipe, uh, that about did Jerry in, because that was, that was fun to, to fix, and so that slowed us down. What we've done, as you can see, the black irrigation tubing, we've snaked it through. Um, over here, when we were doing on the other side of the tea olives, there's a white PVC pipe sticking out. So that is what Jerry will tap into with the black tubing into that. And of course, that's its own zone. So this zone will control everything that's in the landscape. So the tea olives, all of this bed, the gardenias, the hydrangeas, roses up to here, and then everything underneath the forest pansy. That will all be one zone. The tubing that we're using is about maybe a half inch, I would have to check with Jerry, a half inch tubing that has holes every, it looks to be about 12, I think probably about 12 inches. So that way it'll really kind of soak into this bed. Sometimes, depending on the landscape, we'll use this tubing and then punch in emitters for each specific shrub or plant. We're just gonna have so many plants in here. And again, this is such an extremely hot area that um, we will be fine putting down a good bit of water in this area. So we have snaked it through um, the, the main points of, of the bed so all the plants will get it. What we're gonna do for today, to call it a day so we just don't absolutely totally kill ourselves, is Jerry and Jackson have gone to go get the mulch. So he is going to load up, I believe, um, his truck and trailer full of mulch and then bring it over here and just dump it because that'll be easier and then use the, the bobcats to actually dump it throughout the beds instead of running back and forth from here to the nursery with loads of mulch. So that is the plan because I just don't see us getting everything done today. We would just really work ourselves into a hole and we've got other things that we've got to do tomorrow that we need to be rested for. So the most important thing is, is to get this where it will get water and that it's mulched so that it can retain that moisture. But everything has been planted well. I've already gone ahead and watered in the tea olives because I have a hose that can reach. So they have been well watered in and everything has received its appropriate fertilizer. So once we get some water on these guys and some mulch, then we will be good to go. We're gonna do it up to this point. <laughs> Another day we will get the roses planted and beyond up here. But um, for now, that's what we're gonna do. That's, what, that's probably good. I know. I wasn't quite sure how far you wanted to go. Well, I figured the way it's, it'll dump, you know?
Okay, friends, we are done for the day, and man, are we, <laughs> we're glad to call it an afternoon. It's four o'clock and we're done. Four o'clock is the hottest part of the day. Sometimes it feels like here in North Carolina. So we have taken refuge underneath the forest pansy because it's about 20 degrees cooler right here. But that area is done. The irrigation is hooked up. The mulch is laid down nice and thick. Um, that spot is done. We will tackle the rest of the area in the next coming days. We have a few other projects that we, imagine that, a few other projects we have to attend to before we can finish this one. But it's all right. Um, we're moving in the right direction and we are very happy with it. Those incredible hydrangeas are gonna be absolutely gorgeous as a hedge behind the seating wall. And we space those five feet apart because they can grow five to six feet wide. Now, right now, it looks like there's a lot of space between them, but again, you think mature size, mature, um, just, you know, what are they gonna look like in five years from now? And there'll be this gorgeous hedge then. So it's actually four to, I think it's four to five feet tall and wide. So again, they'll grow nice to each other. They'll just what we call kiss each other when they're a mature size, beautiful hedge, plenty of room on either side. Again, if I want to plant something down on the grass side of them, I will have room to do that. It will be easy to tap into the irrigation if we need to add other areas and other um, spots that need some water, which I already know that there's going to be those areas. We can easily tap in and, to, and extend those drip lines very simply. Um, we got the nine bark planted right now. That poor nine bark has been in a pot it was in the ground, it got dug up, it was in a pot all winter. It's not looking its best right now, but it's happy, I mean, it's healthy, and it is. it will flourish now that it's in the ground. It's got some good room for its roots to grow, good fertilizer, so it will be glorious. That's gonna give us a lot of good fall color also with the gardenias around it, because, I mean, gardenias, these are the August Chuck Hayes variety. Sometimes gardenias for us can be a little iffy because our winters, can be a little cold sometimes. You've got to find that sweet spot as far as like where to plant them and the right variety. We had these last year and in fact these overwintered in their pots up at the production lot. So if they can survive up there then they will do just fine in this nice hot area of the yard. They are a beautiful, it's a double bloom on it. I'm a bit of a gardenia snob. I much prefer the double bloom of the gardenia as opposed to just the single bloom huge, fragrant, beautiful smell. You remember last summer, sometimes I'd have a gardenia stuck in my ear. Well, it came from those plants. They will get wider than they will get tall. So they will be a nice little transition from that nine bark. And then of course, coming around between the gardenias and the soon to be fountain, that's where we're gonna have some stepping stones. Jerry and I were talking about it at lunch. We're toying with the idea right now of going ahead and getting another pallet of the flagstone so we can just lay that same flagstone in the mulch. We won't do metal edging and the rock and all that. It'll just be the flagstone in the mulch um, so that you have a nice little pathway to walk through there so that way people know, oh, I'm supposed to walk here and not you know, through the middle of the gardenias or something else. You gotta tell people where to go. So we're giving them a path of where to go and then we can use the rest of that flagstone for the path behind the tea olives and between the um, garden shed. And so we'll have that. That should be a good, nice little size pallet. And I guess if we have any pieces left over, we can always stick them back in the pathway or something. So I think that's kind of what we're planning on doing right now. Um, and then coming around, of course, we'll get the fountain done. At some point, we've still got to get all the workings for that to get that up and going. And then we have the tea olives. Again, the tea olives will get nice and tall. They're evergreen, beautiful fragrance. Um, in the fall, winter, early spring, they will create a beautiful evergreen hedge. We do plan on coming in front of those and planting some azaleas. We don't have the variety that we want right now, so we're just gonna leave that blank until we get it. But we did go ahead and string some irrigation in there, so that will be ready to go for those. In the meantime, uh, for this summer, I really think I'm gonna fill that area in with some annuals. Most likely it will be some Vista petunias because those are the most vigorous spreaders, masses, pops of color. So more than likely that will be filled in, not the whole area, but we'll have big pops of color. I'm thinking 
silverberry it's kind of what i'm leaning towards or it might be snowdrift i don't know we'll see but a cool color um, and then once we get coming into the second stage here then we'll get the generous gardeners planted on each side of the arch and i've already kind of mapped out how i want to plant the rest of the area again the areas this is not the complete garden these are getting in the bones you know us any kind of gardener you're going to keep, continue to add move something works well here something doesn't work we're going to take it out and move it so forth and so on that is the absolute joy of gardening so we have this beautiful nice big space that we are going to be able to enjoy for years to come um, it's going to be a lot of fun as always, thank you so much for coming along with this journey with us. We hope you've had some fun watching us get hot and sweaty and <laughs> wrestling with mud and all sorts of fun things today. But y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.